Hey guys, how's it going? Bobby Watts here from Team Futaba. Today I'm going to walk you through a setup video of the CGY750, Futaba's uh, gyro, flybarless, and governor combination. Um, this is an all-in-one unit that I told you guys about, I believe it was last October. Um, and since then, a few of us test pilots have just gotten so many flights on these things. Um, I've had it on my 700 and on my 450, and so far I've had awesome results from both. I, ca I can't stress enough how much this thing has just improved my flying overall. Um, I'm doing stuff right now, especially in auto rotations and just throughout the flight that I could never do before with a fly bar. Um, and now that I feel connected to it, my flying has just progressed immensely. It, it, it's been awesome. Um, also, while traveling around to different fun flies, I've let various guys fly it at the field and so far the general consensus is that everybody really thinks that this one is going to take everything to the next level. So that's awesome. We're totally glad to hear that. Um, so since our last, uh, my last video in October, uh, we've done some revisions to it, just minor things, uh, making everything more user friendly for you guys. So that when you get it, you set it up, you plug in your very basic settings and you're good to go. Other than that, in the radio menu, the only thing you, that you really want to do is you want to go to the Futaba website and when the downloads are completely available, I'm not sure what's up there right now, you want to make sure that you download the very latest versions of the software for the 8FG and the 12Z. What that'll do is on the 8FG it gives you two more channels plus two more digital channels. It's a free download so you're actually making your 8 channel radio a 12 channel radio. It's awesome, excuse me, four more channels and then two digital channels. So it gives you a total of 12 plus two. What that allows you to do is that allows you to use an S-Bus receiver and then you can change your, all of your gyro uh, rates on the fly. Everything's done from the radio. The only thing that's going to be done when it comes time to tweak it, it, that's in the unit, is you're going to change your flip rates, your pitch rate, your aileron rate, and your elevator rate. You're going to change that on the unit. Other than that, mostly everything else you can set in the radio when it comes time to fly it. H1 swash, very basic settings. The only settings we're ever going to touch here are in the basic menu. There's one instance where we need to go into the advanced menu for initial setup. Other than that, you guys will be so thrilled with this thing. I think it's awesome. So let's get going. We're going to move on to setup. So here we go. All right, so as promised, here we go with the setup section. Uh, the first things that we want to do is go into our radio and make sure that we've got everything set up correctly. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my linkage menu and I'm going to go to my model type. Like I said, helicopter H1. That's the most important thing when we set up the 750. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do here is that you're, we're going to scroll down into our function and I'm going to show you that when you update your uh, 8 channel radio for instance or the 12 or the 14, uh, the 10 is, I'm not sure about the 10, um, but the 10 should be able to give you enough channels to do it anyway. Um, as you can see here it gives us channel 9, 10, 11, 12 as well as our two digital channels here. So that's the first thing to notice. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to head into our model menu and we're going to scroll all the way down here over to the gyro. So now what the gyro does is it gives you gyro which is rudder. When it just says gyro that means it's talking about your rudder. When we go to gyro 2 now this is talking about aileron. Gyro 3 this is talking about elevator. So as you see here three out of three. So you have three different things that you can change on the fly very easily and everything matches up perfectly. So for instance this is my T-Rex 450. Um, this is 27 which is very low. Um, the, the 700s we're seeing in the 40s to 50 range for rudder maybe even up to 60. Anywhere around there you're fine. Um, so what we're gonna do um, like I always do on a rudder um, I have switch F which is my back left switch set up for normal normal versus heading hold. So you can see on is here when all my switches are back. And then when I scroll um, to number two, which is normal, I flip switch F up, it's on, off. So right now I'm in normal mode. So this is how I track my tail like I demonstrated in the 701 video. This is exactly what you need to do um, on this as well. You need to track everything and we'll get to that. Um, so then we're going to scroll around to gyro two. As you can see here, I have switch D set up, which is uh, this guy. I use this uh, front guy for um, the heading hold and normal mode on my aileron and elevator. And simply all this is going to be used for is our trim flight. So if you, you can see gyro 2 which is aileron, gyro 3 elevator, they're both grouped on switch D. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to show you so that all my switches are back. So this is in the back position right now. Um, when I change this to 2, 
you can see I'm in normal mode. So when I flick this all the way down, you can see that that's activated. So when I put that all the way down, that means that I'm in uh, normal mode, non-heading hold mode. And of course, I'm going to go to GY. The numbers match up perfectly. Uh, if it says 50% here, it's going to be 50% on the unit. Done. You don't even have to calibrate anything. Uh, same is going to be done on Gyro 3. So that being said, that's really all that we did in here. Um, the governor is still going to be the same as uh, when we set up um, everything on our uh, 701. So we'll go back into here. Um, sorry, this is an electric model. Obviously, this does not have a governor. Um, I was thinking nitro. If this is a nitro, we'll set it up. If you want to go take a look at the 701 video, that shows you how to activate your governor screen. It's very simple. Just put it on your flight mode switch. Um, I do this here on my uh, switch E and that seems to work very very well. So now we're gonna uh, plug in the battery and we'll show you how this 750 works. So here we have the uh, CGY 750. This is what it looks like when you guys finally get it. Um, as you can see here we have gyro which is your gyro. Uh, RSEN is your governor sensor that you're gonna get um, if you have a nitro model. SBUS is the uh, red wire that's running from a receiver. You then have aileron, elevator, and pitch servos. They plug right into here. The throttle, you'll see right below that, you're gonna plug your throttle servo in, and rudder, you plug your, plug your rudder servo in. Easy as that. So when I flip it over here, you can see my receiver. Um, this is the new uh, R6203SB. Um, this can actually be used on nitro models too. It's amazing. I mean, it's only it only gives you four slots to plug stuff in, but that's all you need because SBUS is just one. So right here, all I have is SBUS plugged into the top, which is the red one, and right behind that is my speed controller wire. That's all there is. Done. So you just bind it just like a regular uh, receiver. So we have that, and lastly, we have the sensor. Um, you can see here, uh, it's a nice sensor. They a little bit better than the earlier plastic ones they gave us just as prototypes, but everything's nice. As you can see here, just as in my Nitro, this guy is hard mounted. Absolutely no tape, no other different kind of tapes, no different kind of plates. Exactly the tape they give you. Nitro, electric, gasoline, I don't care what it is. Put the tape on, stick it down, you're good. Uh, most important thing with this is you want to make sure that your sensor is perfectly in line. If you can imagine a gyro, a regular gyro just a rudder it doesn't matter where it sits because it's always going to be part of the model but when it comes time to give elevator and aileron if it's crooked then it's going to roll or flip at a crooked angle so you always want to make sure you spend a good amount of time and get this lined up perfectly also you can see here i kind of strain relief this so that nothing's pulling on it uh, that's very important another thing to make sure of make sure where you're mounting this is perfectly perfectly flat even if there's some flashing in the plastic or something this will immensely affect the way you're helicopter is going to fly. Make sure your plate is perfectly flat to the model. So now we're going to initialize the 750. Does a cool little backflip right there. And you can see the rudder kicked four times and the swash kicked up and down four times. This, once it does that, you're done. You're totally ready to go. Um, it's very, very simple. So as I told you in the earlier video, uh, the only setup tool that you're ever going to need for this um, fly barless unit is the nice, very inexpensive poker tool, as you can see here. This thing is just awesome. You don't need a laptop, you don't need a programmer, you don't need anything. This will do it. So I'm going to show you, you here the different menus. As I said, um, 750, we have, the first thing you'll notice is you have the gains flashing here. As you can see, I already showed you them on my radio. For the 450, I just kind of arbitrarily set my aileron and elevator games at 50, and they really work quite well, so I really haven't touched it. Um, as you can also see here, your voltage. So it's just going to cycle between your gains the whole time. Uh, so we're then we're going to go here, and I'm going to show you a, f a few different cool features that the 750 has. So we're going to hit the uh, plus button. Um, what shows you here is it shows you a time, hours and minutes of what the governor is on. I have like a hundred hours or something, hundreds of hours or something ridiculous on my 700 Nitro, which is cool. It only tracks the time that your model's actually in governor mode. So you can really get a good idea for how many flights you've got on it. If you want an overall time, just look in the radio. That'll show you how long your radio's been on for just setup time and all that. So the next menu we have here is uh, the OLED saver. This means that it'll just go dark when you're not using it. 
Um, the next one, operation mode, I just did gyro and throttle. Um, if you were running, uh, it defaults to gyro and governor. Um, if you're running nitro, you can do that. But electric, I just turned it to gyro and throttle. Uh, the next thing that we can hit here is it gives you elevator max. This will show you in how many degrees per second uh, your flip rate is, so your elevator rate. So if you want to go out, fly a little bit, come back, it may say 360 degrees per second. That means that you're doing one flip in a second. It's a really cool number. Um, it's a really cool feature that measures it. Uh, sorry, I hit it too quickly. Uh, so you have elevator and you have roll max. You can also see how fast your roll rate is. So that means if you want to set up all your models so that they roll and flip the same rate, there you go. That's all you need to do. So we're going to go back here to the home screen. Uh, once again, there's a home screen when you see elevator, rudder, and everything flipping back and forth. So now I'm just going to show you the different uh, menus that the CGY750 has. So the first one is a rudder basic. Next is an aileron basic. Next we have an elevator basic. A swash basic, an S bus basic, and that's it. That's all you got. This is all we're going to mess with today. So, first we'll go into the rudder. Um, those of you who saw the 701 video, it's identical. Nothing has changed. Um, so, I'm going to press my plus button here. Get out of your way. So, oops, I hit it too fast. So, the first type is the servo type. You pick the frame rate. Uh, this is a 1520 frame rate servo. Um, the direction, you just set this here. Um, you set the direction based on which, which way it needs to compensate. Um, if it's reversed on the actual rudder stick, you just reverse it in your uh, radio. Here you set your limits, A and B. Um, mine are really off, uh, thanks to uh, nice geometry here. Um, ideally, you want them the same on my nitro. You want them like 100, 100. If it's 150, then you may need to look. You may have some issues. I know what my issues are here, and I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> Uh, next, I have your flight mode. Uh, put it in 3D. Those of you guys, if you're not doing scale, put it in 3D. Uh, that's it. Rudder gyro basic. That's all we're going to do. So now that we're done with rudder, we're going to go into aileron. So right here, I hit this button to cycle through. So now we're going to go into the aileron menu, which is very, very, very uh, not much in there, which is good. It's less things for me to mess up. So first you're going to hit the direction. Now the reverse when it comes to the aileron and the elevator screen, uh, the reverse is going to reverse the compensation direction. So that means when you give your swash plate right, you want it to compensate left. When you tilt it left, it wants to compensate right. Same with elevator. When you tilt it forward, it wants to tilt back. If you do this, it really can't mess up on your first flight. It's the same as rudder. When it moves right, it you want to compensate left. So that is how that works right there. The next thing is your gain. Uh, this gain and this number here, this correlates to your gain. I don't touch anything in this menu. You don't really need it. Uh, the next is the mode CMT. CMT allows you to switch between heading hold and non-heading hold, which is what you want. This is just default. And that's it. Sorry to disappoint you guys. That's all we've got. Elevator is identical. I'm not even going to go through that. All you need to do is you just go to your reverse screen, go reverse or normal based on your compensation direction.